Hey guys, it's Russell back, and on today's video, we're going to be working on the 89 Chevy K1500. We have a minor rear brake issue. So the problem is, on this particular truck at this time, is that sometimes the uh, parking brake, when you release it, it appears to release completely, but it's not doing that. Sometimes it will bind when you start to go forward. <clears throat> um, this has happened on several occasions and we're gonna check it out and see what could possibly be the problem. I do not like rear drum brakes just for reasons like this. Um, I prefer disc brakes, but it wasn't even an option back on 89. So let's, uh, let's look at what we've got and see if we can diagnose this and fix it. All right, so first thing we need to do is remove the wheel. I've got the truck up on two giant heavy-duty jack stands. All right, so here is our brake drum. Let me get it around to... I have some markings here that I put when I installed these. So you see how nice and easy it takes a little bit of wiggling to come out, but it's not bad at all. Okay. So here, we've got excellent shoe life left on both sides. Got a lot of dust in there. So let's get this cleaned up. So I'm just using just normal brake parts cleaner. This is non-chlorinated. I prefer chlorinated because it's it works better. All right, so we'll let that uh, evaporate out. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the brake drum and then we'll be back to show you what it looks like. All right, so on careful inspection, what I found was this spring right here, as you can see, I'll show you right here, had popped off of this end. So um, it just goes right there and then I need to Get some pliers and this is what actually holds the pad with tension on it so that when the emergency brake is released it yanks the pad back there we go all right so that is the best way to do it you just take some small needle nose channel locks just grip it right there get it all the way um, there is enough room in that little slot that if you get it in there and take the tip of the screwdriver and just drive it home it should work all right so now let's see what this is supposed to do i'm going to put the emergency brake on did it yep sure did all right, so since, I've, uh, since I'm already in here, I'm going to pull the shoes back just a little bit. And there's several points, three points on each side that I'm gonna use some brake lubricant on to help the shoes slide a little better. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this. You've seen other people use this. You've seen me use it. The Permatex Ceramic Extreme Brake Parts Lubricant. This is the purple stuff. All right. Just like that. And that'll give me plenty of room. There's a place right there. All right. There we go. All 
right, so I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Now one little trick you can do when you depress this, you can turn the pin in the back instead of turning the spring. It just, if you're using channel locks like that, it's easier you turn the, uh, the pin in the back. So There we go. But there we go. And I'm also going to inspect the inside of the boot. Just pull this back a little bit. Make sure there's no wetness in here. There's not. It will start leaking if the cylinder starts failing in here before you'll ever see it out here. So these are actual. Uh, AC Delco units. I find those to be, even though they're made in China, I find them to be of higher quality. So I've got uh, my drum here. I've already cleaned out. I inspected it and the drum looks great. There is, like I said before, just the tiniest little ridge right here, but it's not very much. So the last time I did this, I did measure the diameter and I can't remember what I put it to um, maybe it was like a millimeter or something so if I can if I can slide it like that it's still slide it off that's about as tight as I need it So this one is a tiny bit looser than the other one. Um, let me show you how to, I like the way the tension this one's adjusted to. So let's adjust this one so that it's the same. It's got a little, it's a little harder to, to take off. at the end right there. So what I want to do is I'm going to hold this little lever right here. That's your adjuster. Every time you operate the parking brake, this will grab one of those teeth and move it down. All right, so if we rotate it this way, if we rotate it with the way the adjuster would do it, like this, all right, I just tighten it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this and I'm going to go backwards. A couple of teeth. Or notches, I should say. Now going backwards is not as easy as going forwards. All right, so I did about five teeth. Now you have to get this thing on perfectly square. Like that, see? So sitting down a lot of times is easier. So you can see. So now it's about now it's about the same as the other side. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm good with that. Alright. So I'm gonna show you guys a little trick. If you've got heavy tires and wheels. These are just 245, I don't know, what are these? 245, 75, 16s. These are really heavy tires. These are load range E, so they're like 10 ply. So they're very heavy. Um, there we go. And then all you gotta do is get one on there. Obviously, if you have a lift, you wouldn't care to do that, but if you've got big 
33s or 35s, you got a Jeep, whatever, use that. And that'll save you from having to punch over in a squatted position to try to manhandle the wheel and tire assembly on.